got a problem here. This is a war I'll need an army. Or a really good team. One man might be all that stands between humanity and the greatest threat of our brief existence. Shepard remains our best hope. Commander, just like old times, huh? Mass Effect 2 is a continuation of the incredible space opera we started with Mass Effect 1. Everything that's on this game is just light years ahead of what we did last time. There is a non zero probability of error. Then blow them up. It's got great story, it's got action. It's fantasy, it's fun. Hey, I'm talking to you. Sexy. I settled for nothing but the best. The bar has been raised for Mass Effect 2. If you push this, it'll go badly for you. Mass Effect 2 is a darker story. It's a lot more personal. The Lazarus Project will proceed as planned. You're going to um, find some things out that are going to be a little shocking to you. Just lie still. Try to stay calm. It's about Commander Shepard really trying to figure out what's going on in the universe. What is that? Run! Human colonies are actually disappearing, and they're not sure why, if it's tied to the, the Reapers. No one can hide. The Seekers find you. It has something to do with this new force in the galaxy. My god, I think it's a collector. You have to gather a, a band of some of the most badass mercenaries across the galaxy. Shepard, I thought you were dead. To, to help you defeat this, this threat to all organic life, and it's, it's a huge, epic challenge. That's what makes a great team story, is you bring all these disparate characters together, this kind of motley crew, and then you let them have at each other. Humanity's place in the galaxy is stronger than ever, and still it's not enough. The real thing about the game that characterizes Mass Effect is an incredible sense of scale. What we want to do is really expand the universe, take you to more worlds, more cultures. And there's just so much more at stake. You're seeing things and fighting things on a much larger scale. I think people are just going to be uh, blown away by some of the, the, the great places that you get to go and explore. What are you looking at? The man whose day I'm about to ruin. Uh, uh, I'm not looking for trouble. Maybe you better get out of here before I find you some. Lots of cool stuff to investigate, so poke around all the nooks and crannies, you're gonna have a great time playing it. One of the special things about Mass Effect 2 is that our characters, uh, especially the team that you're putting together, are some of the most distinct and varied characters we've ever put into a game before. Garrus, what are you doing here? A little target practice. They're very specific and have very individual personalities. Oh, you've got Grunt, uh, who's just, you know, violent. And you've got someone like Jack, who's a bit of a psychopath. That's where I killed my first man. Real badass in the game. You can actually see the scars on her arms where she's been experimented on. I survived this place because I was tougher than the rest. That's who I am. Thane, who's this mysterious assassin, and obviously uh, very good at it. <laughs> His motivations are a little unclear, too, which I think makes him very interesting. Commander Shepard, 
the elusive man. He's the head of, of uh, Cerberus. We don't know a lot about him, and we don't know if we can trust him. I thought we'd be meeting face to face. It's hard to think of any character I've played that's close to this guy. Unnecessary precaution because of the ambiguity of his morality. I wouldn't trust him all that much. You and I are on the same side. We just have different methods. You survived a Thresher Maw attack that wiped out the rest of your team. Going through something like that changes you. It can break you if you let it. Commander Shepard is, of course, a hard-bitten, ruthless individual. She'll do whatever has to be done to do the right thing. Perhaps he's a kind-hearted, nice individual who helps people out when he can. What are you doing back here? I'm with the uh, Citadel Health and Safety. We've had vermin reports in storage areas around here. I should go. If I had a nickel for every time I said I should go, I wouldn't have to work anymore. <laughs> I should go. I should go. I should go. I should go. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! And leather seats! He's a pilot through and through. I mean, that's, that's who he is. How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Murak does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Commander, can we shut this thing off? Joker's only romance is with the computer? Thanks, dude. There's nothing wrong with off-duty distractions, though some of your extranet bookmarks are technically illegal in council space. And I've been jockeying to get screen time with Trisha Helfer for <laughs> quite a while now. It's sad that our, our first coupling is in a video game where she's a disembodied voice and I'm a guy with brittle bones. You may have suffered a number of stress fractures. That's what pills are for, Edie. She is so my mom. It's a lot of really interesting personality types that are uh, really ready to, to tear things up in battle. What are you doing here? First, we're going to kill you. Then we'll see. Mass Effect is designed as a trilogy from the start, and it's actually woven together as a trilogy in a way that no other game is. There's a real transition from Mass Effect 1, where Mass Effect 1, you're new on the galactic stage, humans are kind of unknown, There's, you gotta, you're kind of in this establishing situation. By the end of Mass Effect 1, you basically saved the galaxy, proven that humans are a valuable member of the galactic races, and then Mass Effect 2 starts. It's almost like the Empire Strikes Back of the Mass Effect trilogy. It's, it's a dark second chapter, and it's, you know, it's, it's, you've got to make a lot of challenging decisions in the game, but it's all for the greater good. You know, you've seen enough of the galaxy to know that it's not, everything's not all it seems. There's a dark underbelly you have to deal with, and you're going places and doing things that you never would have imagined in the first one. So we had to give you more environments, really take the characters to the next level. We really improved the lighting. We focused on the action, improved like the AI, the cover, the overall combat experience. This might sting a bit! Also, I mean, the level of customization for things like armor and the way you look is, is just over the top. But this is stuff that you know, really, really changes the gameplay experience. You really create your own game. What we were able to do with Mass Effect 2 is improve every aspect of the gameplay. So the second you pick it up, you know that it feels better, it just works better, and you're having so much more fun. What we really want to aspire to is, is creating something that you know, surpasses movies in terms of its ability to engage players and make people want to live in this world. And we think we've done that with Mass 2. A game like Mass Effect 2 is just really unprecedented. There's nothing like it. There's no comparison point that has the, the tactical depth and the shooting controls, but also the rich RPG systems, the characterization, the emotionally engaging narrative, the, the RPG progression and customization, exploration and combat. And it's a complete package. It's just over the top amazing. to the feedback from fans and press from the original Mass Effect, and we just implemented a ton of features and improvements across the board. We need to get to Tally. Got any ideas? I'm not moving so well, but I can still pull a trigger. There isn't a single aspect of Mass Effect 2 that we didn't touch in terms of trying to improve the quality of the experience of the player. Let's go shoot some gas. <laughs> 
For people who play Mass Effect 1, what they're going to really notice on Mass Effect 2 is how much better it looks. This is Tachanka's most recent scar. The lighting is improved, the character, the detail we have in there is incredible. It endures like the Krogan. The graphics of Mass Effect 2 are absolutely phenomenal. Mass Effect 2 looks fantastic. Just gorgeous. It, it looks beautiful. It's so wonderfully futuristic and, and lifelike. It feels like you're uh, in a movie. Except you get to participate in it. What we're going for is a game with a lot more intensity. Take it, fire. So we spent a lot of time improving the combat in the game. We spent a lot of time streamlining the RPG mechanics. You have to let it go. Your past doesn't have to control you. Fluid, seamless frame rate as well. This is locked and loaded at 30 frames a second. It's very smooth, the texture's loaded, it's beautiful. I am Omega. The combat is incredible. You can take cover. You can shoot over top of the cover. Characters grab each other, they pull each other, they, they move each other around. So what you're going to get is the same amount of gameplay as you got in Mass Effect 1, it's just going to be better. Mass Effect 2 really is this incredible balance of action and story, probably among the best in the gaming space. Miranda, wait. You don't want to do this. I never want to see you again, Nikit. Done. The intensity in Mass Effect 2 comes from a, a couple different sources. First off, this game is as much a shooter as it is a role-playing game. The combat in ME2 is, is vastly, vastly superior to ME1. It's got really tight, precise controls, so you really feel moment to moment like you can hit your target. Enemy down. If you're a really good shooter, you can hit the tank with just a bullet, ignite it, and then it'll just explode. You actually feel like you're physically there, right down to actually being able to hit enemies. You can throw people around, you can shoot them in the air, you can freeze them, you can blast them, your party members can do all different things. Kill me. You can focus in on people and then curve your biotics around any cover that they're in and then pull them back out that way. Stuff like that that opens up a whole different range of techniques that you could never do on M1. You got tactical depth with biotic powers, tech abilities, and a ton of weapons. What we wanted to do is give a lot more value to the player as they're upgrading. So what you'll see is unique weapons for every time you get a new gun. We wanted to give you like an entirely new model. When you get something, it's immediate, it's apparent, it's it looks different, you get a different silhouette on it, and it's got different gameplay as well. When you pull the trigger, every weapon actually has a different feel in your hands. Everything is kind of reacting in terms of the rumble and the visuals and the sound. It all comes together and it just makes it a much more visceral experience. Strategic as well, it's much more intelligent and uh, exciting combat experience than it, than it was in every one. A lot of people lost their lives on that station. We have to work together here. Your attitude isn't helping anything. I have the utmost respect for your abilities, Shepard. It's your motivations that concern me. We created really a revolutionary conversation system that really allows you to make choices and drive the conversation based on you know, what you want to do emotionally, uh, where you can actually literally interrupt in real time and, and, and suddenly perform an action. But I'm coming in there and we're going to talk south. You're in my way. Get them. The exciting thing about the conversation system in, in Mass Effect is you don't know what Shepard's going to do. Like, you kind of direct him in a certain way, and suddenly he's going to act in a unique way. I've got nothing more to say to you. you can it's very, very powerful because you, you feel like you're directing it, but yet you're still amazed and surprised by what happens. Another thing that people love about our games is that we, we provide you with these huge choices that, you know, affect the outcome of the game. What are you looking at? You see my gun. Do you really want to do this? I Fine. You're off the hook. For now. See you around. They can play the characters a lot darker and have a lot more darker experience, or they can play it a lot more Paragon, um, and they can, you know, they can shape the story as they want. You gotta make the decision when you're playing a game like this, at some certain points, do I really, really make the decision to be nice to everybody? Doesn't look that bad, actually. He doesn't need to know that. If you start limping now, you might find a shady spot before you bleed out. 
how are you going to play? Who, you know, are you going to let people die, or are you going to try to do everything you can and to keep to keep them alive? And what the hell do you want? At any one time, you know, you're faced with a lot of different things you can do, but then you really get a focus moment when you have to decide who lives and dies. We kill you first. I've had enough of this. Little choices here and there, and it changes everything. They're morally challenging choices. You can be a paragon or renegade, but they're going to have outcomes, and you're going to have to live with the consequences of your actions. It's not a perfect plan, but it's a plan. Time to spill a little murk blood. Glad to see you haven't changed. As you make choices in a Mass Effect game, those choices not only affect the remainder of the story, one less now. But when you take that same character that you've created and you pull that character into the next game, like taking a character from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2, it pulls in all of the history and the decisions that you've made. And that's incredible. It's never been done like that before. Shepard, he's a hero, but he's just one man. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. The great success for us was that we have millions of people out there who loved the first game and really want to know what happens next. The story in Mass Effect 2 ends up going to some of the really dark places in the galaxy. One of the key themes for Mass Effect 2 is this whole concept of, of darkness. It's almost like the Empire Strikes Back of the Mass Effect trilogy. It's, it's a dark second chapter. It's moody. It's like that dark space you kind of keep secret that we're scratching at that you're going to go to in this game. Well, Mass Effect 2 is a darker game. We definitely wanted to support that with the lighting. Definitely going to some gritty worlds. We go right from clean space stations to sort of the dark end of the spectrum. From a cinematic point of view, lighting is so important. We wanted to make each level have its own color palette, have its own uh, lighting style. What this allows us to do is to guide the player uh, through color uh, and lighting, through the story, through the ups and downs. But each level is designed with its own specific color mixture, color temperature, um, color palette in mind. It falls to me to remove your stain from our world. Stop talking and get to it. Attack! The environments in Mass Effect 2 are uh, so much more alive than, than in the first one. Approach exterior docking cradle 17. We have so much more diverse range of places and locations to visit in the second one. So we wanted to go to a place called Omega, which is the opposite of the Citadel. It's a uh, station that's built underneath this uh, asteroid that's mining it. It's beat up, it's dirty, it's seedy. It's got more environment for like smoke and dirt. It's really an exciting place. That's close enough. This is the Krogan homeworld. One of the things that we really wanted to, to play up with this world is, is just how blasted it is. Uh, you know, it's absolutely ruined. The wind here is just, it's just harsh and ripping. It kicks up all kinds of dust and atmosphere and really just make the player feel like it's this choking experience. You can go to a bright, shiny location and it looks natural in the world. You can go to a really dark and dreary location and it fits as well. And the team has used that to actually just drive the emotional engagement of the environments to a whole new level. One of the key focuses for the sound design for Mass Effect was this concept of darker, kind of noise-polluted world that we have in Mass Effect 2. You're visiting these horrible, horrible sort of places that you really wouldn't want to hang around in. And it makes a, a real big difference when, when the audio is really feeding into that whole vibe. We could just knock her out and take her. I'd like to see you try. This isn't like the other hubs we've seen here. We wanted to take it to a, a darker, kind of more intense kind of feel with the, uh, the music. Shepard Commander, 
We concluded that destruction of this station was the only resolution to the heretic question. There is now a second option. So we're using sounds that have got a kind of a, a more mysterious and ominous kind of tone. And so um, there is this more kind of uh, nihilistic sound to the, the soundtrack. Their virus can be repurposed. If released into the station's network, the heretics will be rewritten to accept our truth. There's no moral difference between the two. If you change who the heretics are, you've killed them. Or release the virus. Acknowledged. So, this assassin, you planning to stop him? I'm just here to make sure he survives. With the sound design for Mass Effect 2, we try very hard to create a unique and viable soundscape. For an example, the, uh, the flying cars that you hear traveling around in places like the Citadel and, and Ilium. There's a, there's a bridge downtown that's got this really strange kind of corrugated metal arrangement on the floor that's got this uh, really interesting sound when cars drive over it. So I recorded all these strange pass-by sounds and sort of distorted the sound to, to create this weird sort of uh, tonal element as, uh, as the cars fly past. And you can hear that in all of the, uh, the flybys on uh, places like that. I think the fans are going to be incredibly impressed with how high quality Mass Effect 2 is. We've got a job to do. Let's get to it. Really intense cinematic sequences, emotionally engaging narrative. Our place in the universe is more fragile than we'd like to think. Beautiful characters. Characters you really feel are, are just credible and real characters you can interact with. I think what we've got is, is, is a game that's even better than we thought it was going to be when we started designing it. It feels like you're playing your own game, like we built it just for you, the fan. It's like uncharted territory. It's, it's a world within a world. For those people who think you're the center of the universe, now you are. It's a roller coaster ride right to the end. It's fantastic. It's just incredible. There is, there is no limit to it. I'm really proud of the Mass Effect 2 team. I mean, they just poured their hearts and souls into this. They're smart and they're creative and they're passionate, and they really worked hard to deliver an amazing experience for you, the fans. We need to hurry. Right. It's not only an incredibly ambitious story in terms of what we're trying to do, but for players, it is an incredibly ambitious achievement to have played through, you know, one, two, and then three games where all of your decisions, all your actions, are actually starting to cascade and they're affecting the entire world around you. I think people are just gonna be blown away by it. And they'll start to really sense the direction that the game is going and the trilogy is going. And uh, people are gonna be pretty excited and, and uh, chomping at the bit for the next installment. I know that was important, but you perform Gilbert and Sullivan? I am the very model of a scientist Salarian. I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert, which I know is a tautology. My xenoscience studies range from urban to agrarian. I am the very model of a scientist Salarian.